Welcome to Game Changers Live from Miami, Florida. My name is Sergio Tijera. I'm your host. And each and every week, we bring you someone who has been a game changer in their field and who's touched the lives of thousands to get their perspective on their journey, their mindset, their struggles and successes so that we can inspire you on your journey. So let's get started right now. And welcome to Game Changers Live. My name is Sergio Tijera, your host, and you can catch us each and every week on your favorite podcast channel, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, LinkedIn, you name it. Also on Island TV on Mondays and Wednesdays on Comcast. And we are coming to you live from the campus of Florida International University, the College of Communications, Architecture and the Arts, which is our home studio here in Miami. And I have a guest today, local hometown hero and recognized restaurateur, we got Iggy Garcia Medical, and he's a CEO and founder of and uh, founding partner of Grove Bay Group, which we'll talk about here. Has done some amazing things, including getting recently a Michelin star restaurant uh, here in Miami. So, welcome, my brother. Good to see you. Thank you, Sergio. Thank you for having me. So, Iggy, tell me a little bit about about your past because you were in accounting mm -hmm. as your undergrad and and uh, also in your master's degree, and you make a big switch to the restaurant business. Tell me a little bit about what was your original drive going into the accounting space? So uh, I, I was always pretty good at business and in, and in numbers going through high school and college. And I felt it was like the right uh, path into, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do in college. And I felt like business was a very broad, uh, you know, degree. So I, th so I thought, listen, you know, maybe accounting is something more specific. So, you know, let right. me try that out. And uh, I actually thrived in it pretty well. I was, I was with Deloitte & Touche, which uh, back at the time was one of the big six. Uh, I was with them for six years. And then I ended up leaving them to become the director of accounting for MasterCard for the uh, Latin America division. And I had been there a year and I really never had any plans of, you know, going into hospitality. All I knew about it was I'd, I, I like to eat and drink. I mean, that's yeah. about it, right? <laughs> and randomly, one day I get a call from a former colleague at Deloitte saying, hey, Don Shula is looking for a chief financial officer for his restaurant business. Would you uh, would you want to, you know, interview with him? And I said, oh, man, that sounds interesting. But I've only been here a year. You know, I don't know about switching. You know, let me think about it. That night I get home and Dave Shula, Don Shula's oldest son, calls me. And, you know, I knew Dave growing up. <clears throat> he was offensive coordinator for the Dolphins. Yeah. And then he was offensive coordinator under Jimmy Johnson for the Cowboys. And then he was a head coach for the Bengals for a long time. I had grown up watching him, so I knew who he was. He calls me. He's like, hey, Ig, this is Dave Shula. I got your name from Ray. Would you mind coming in and, you know, meeting with my dad and I? And, you know, so when Dave meeting Shula with calls, the legend. You, <laughs> calls <laughs> you, you the and call. asks you to come meet with Don Shula and him, you know, you say yes. So the rest is history. I knew nothing about the restaurant industry. I I, I went into the company in a in in a CFO role. But man, you know, I, as I started getting into it, I really quickly decided, you know what? I like eating and drinking a lot more than debits and credits. It was a lot more yeah. fun. And I did everything I could to really learn everything about it. What was the, what was the, the biggest difference going from a big company like Deloitte to a bit more of like a family business like like Shula's. Yeah, I you know companies like Deloitte and like Mastercard, they're obviously huge companies. They're very established, and since there's so many employees, you really get to see a very small sliver of the entire business. Yeah. Um, once you move into a smaller company like Shula's or even or even our company now, uh, just because you don't have the headcount, you get to expose to a lot of other things. And that's not just finance. So really, a Shula's was the first time that I got exposed to marketing and design mm -hmm. and public relations and 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 operations so i was involved in a lot of other things not just the finance side and you know i really like that a lot more it's not for everybody it's definitely takes somebody with an entrepreneurial spirit right that you want to kind of get out of your lane and and learn a lot more about the business in general what was it that you learned from Shula, either him and his or his dad that that really stuck with you i'll tell you what i i mean i have a lot of a lot of stories with with coach Shula. One of the most interesting things or one of the neatest experiences, you know, anywhere that I traveled with him throughout the country, um, everybody knew who he was. It was really amazing. And I'll never forget this. Um, we were in Portland and, you know, he was but by, by that time he was already, you know, having a hard time walking with hips and, you know, getting up and down. And, and you know, we had a long trip and we we're at the airport sitting down and I was sitting next to him and some random guy came to say hi to him and he asked him for, I think it was a picture. And then, so I stepped in and go, no, no, sir, you know, coach is, you know, he's had a long day. He's tired and he stops me and he goes, no, no, I'll do it. And he gets up and he's struggling to get up and he gets up and takes a picture. 
and he turns to me and, and he says, uh, you know, you should always make enough time for those that that take their time, you know, to talk to you. And he had this approach it that whether it was a president or a janitor, he always made time for people. And he never said no. And in the five years I was with him, I never saw him turn down one autograph or say no to one fan ever. Wow. That's that's amazing. It's a level of humility that right. a lot of people tend to forget, you know. Um, a, a good example is DJ Irie, uh, Ian, Ian Grosher, that we, we went to school together oh, here. No kidding. Uh. He became obviously very famous, but you talk to him and he never forgets to, you know, just being humble, right? And yeah. being kind and what that what that really entails because you, you could let success go to your head at some point. So you go, you, you're at Shula's for how long? I was with him for five years. All right. So then from there, where, what's the next step so in ended the up, journey? Um, so I ended up joining a company called 50 Eggs. Um, at the time, the company had a uh, lime fresh Mexican grill. And then uh, we ended up selling that to Ruby Tuesdays for a for a you know good chunk of money. And then after that, we opened Yardbird and Swine and Kong and a lot of cool concepts. Wow! And that's where I really got the uh, you know I want to say my was that also with Fifty X or that was that on your that own was a Fifty X okay. you know Fifty X I was a I was a chief financial officer for them as well. And that's really where I got my further education on the you know within the hospitality industry as to how to create your own concepts. You know because when I got to Shula, Shula's was really a you know, the concepts are already done. Uh, I wasn't involved in creating anything. Right. But at, at 50X, we're constantly creating new concepts. So being part of that creative process, you know, to me was very interesting. Yeah. And that's and that's sort of what we do now, actually, you know. And how do you, you know, how do you go about that process, right? Because there are so many different concepts, you know, endless amounts of, of, of ideas. Mm -hmm. How do you then narrow something down and say, okay, this is what this city needs right now. Mm -hmm. This is what will work. Because it seems like everything that you guys touch works, or is that not true? Uh, I mean, I would say some more than others. <laughs> you know, you're not going to hit a home run in every single one. You know, right. you, you got a couple singles in there, but um, but no, yeah, you know, we've been blessed. We've been blessed. I think what's made us a little bit different. Uh, my partner and I, who, who's also a CPA and also comes from okay. Big Four Accounting, so we have very similar backgrounds. And him and I have been best friends since we were, you know, 15. Both of us grew up here in Miami. You know, we're born and raised here. But I think what made us a little bit different is that we kind of did it backwards, just by coincidence. Again, because you know, like I mentioned right, earlier, right. I, I I never had any you intentions. Were Became yeah, restaurant going into this versus. business, so so we did it backwards. We already understood the the business side of things, you know, where he stood business because of our backgrounds, and it was a matter of just you know learning the operation side, and that's actually worked out pretty well for us. Um, you know, the restaurant industry is a very difficult industry. It's a it's a you know penny business they say. So the fact that we're able to understand that, you know, that's really helped us. Wow. So from fifty eggs, you you start really gaining. Uh, a lot of traction and experience in terms of you know the the, the real entrepreneurial part, right? You're kind of getting into the creative side and, and 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 that stuff. Then you move out to, and then we, I, you know, my partner and I. By that point in time, I, I Coach Shula had allowed me to do my own franchise, uh, which was a Shula City Forty Seven Grill down in Coral Gables. Ah, okay. So I was so I had a full time job, and then I had that as a side thing. My partner was was one running it more full time than I was, and then in twenty four. Do you know what I want to say? Uh, we bought another restaurant at, uh, at in the airport, uh, a um, Corona Beach House. So we kind of had these two restaurants, uh, okay. one street side, one in the airport, you know, which which we were still you have already today. Grove Bay by that No, point? no, we no. weren't. No. So, right. So we had these two restaurants and we're like... Just kind of independent operator. Independent operators. And it was kind of me and him and we had hired like this one accounting person and... And we were like, hey, I think we sort of have a business here. Why don't we kind of put it together? Why don't you leave your job, join me, and kind of, you know, let's do this full time. Yeah. And that's where Grow Bay started. Um, so so yeah. you were already doing it full time? At the time that I left, uh, you know, I had a full time job with 50 Eggs. And then we had the two restaurants that my partner on was running on the side. Wow. And then, you know, I took the leap of faith and it was, it's, uh, it's a little bit scary taking that, yeah, that, it is. <laughs> that step and, you know, from being from an employee to, you know, your own boss, because yeah. it's exciting and all that. But at the same time, it's scary because how are you going to pay your bills? Exactly. Um, if you're not, if you're not, you know, if you're not making ends meet, we we're lucky enough that we had these two restaurants that are already, you know, producing a little bit, uh, you know, you know, pretty, uh, pretty decent return. So we were, we were able to do it. What is like, you know, what is the psychological process that you went through where you kind of cut the the umbilical cord to the paycheck it's a great question you go through all the thoughts of can it can i make my mortgage next month yeah. what if something goes wrong with the with the two little restaurants that we had mm -hmm. 
Um, how am I going to pay for things? How am I going to you know, survive? I felt that I'm going to get a chance, but if stuff doesn't work out, I can always go back into the corporate world. Right. But I felt at that age, this is, I was still in my, in my, you know, mid to late thirties, uh, you know, that it was now or never, I, you know, yeah. I felt like I had to do it. Uh, and, and I don't want to go back in life and look back and say, you know, that was a regret. I did. Oh. You know, I didn't have. And at the end of the day, if it didn't work out, then, you know, like I said, it, it's just, at it's least, just you money, know. But, you know, but at least, you know, and, right. And um, so, yeah, so. But yeah, but all those all those insecurities, all that anxiety of you know the of the unknown, yeah. um, you know, definitely go through your head. Oh yeah, it's a huge step. I I I I'm exactly the way the way you are. Late thirties went on my own, and um, I'd rather regret something I have done than regret right. something I haven't done. Exactly. I don't want to look back and say, oh man, I wish I would have you know tried doing something on my own. And um, it's tough. I mean, it's like you said, a lot of the insecurities surface and then your self-talk kind of goes, you know, nuts. And, yeah. and it's like, it's a roller coaster, right? This it entrepreneurship is. Is, is a huge roller coaster, but okay. So you make the step out there, mm -hmm. you, you start seeing some traction. When did you say, okay, we, we got something here that we can really expand on and we're good at this. Yeah. So I think it was by our third restaurant, which was glass and vine in uh, coconut grove, um, that it was off to really big sales number right from the beginning. And, uh, you know, where my partner and I looked at each other, we're like, I think, I think, I think we could figure this out. I think yeah. we could do this. So and, at that point you had already started Grove Bay mm -hmm, group, correct, right? So then correct. that was your first restaurant. Correct. Yeah. As uh, under the Grove Bay umbrella. Right. Yeah. Correct. And, um, that, you know, that was, that was a huge hit from the beginning. It did, it, it did good sales, you know, yeah. good, good, uh, operating income. So at that point we felt, okay, I think, I think, sure. There's a lot, we still need to learn. There's a lot of mistakes that we're making and that we're going to make in the future. Right. But overall, I think we have a decent formula that we can, you know, yeah. that we can grow. What would you say is, you know, the, the most important aspect? It, it, I mean, you know, there's a lot of things, but I would say the most important is hiring the right people, I think. And I think that comes out really for all industries. Anything, yeah. Because we've had people at the top, you know, and also starts at the top, the general manager and, you know, and the chef and everything flows down from there. And we've had uh, instances where we've had great people and we've had instances where we've had folks that just weren't cutting it and you see the difference in the production and in the and then and fr from an operations standpoint and the guest experience all the way down to the to the you know financial aspect of the right. business it is it is night and day so really hiring the right people is really key and I, I have been watching some of your videos and you talk about family and culture and and high performance right and uh a, a great attitude and, and a love for being in the business, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. how important is it to find the right fit in terms of that? You know, w what's the first thing you look for? Is it culture? Is it, uh, you know, their attitude? Is it, you know, how hungry they are? Is it their resume? What, what is it that you look for in people? Yeah. So, um, you know, you, you touched on something that was very important to us. This is really came from our background in, you know, public accounting and, mm -hmm. and in these big firms, you know, Deloitte and for me and, you know, Ernst and you for my partner, these are companies that they're top 100 best companies to work for. Right. And they're very culture driven. Yeah. So we kind of brought that into our industry, that, which is for the most part, it's kind of like the Wild West, you know, like yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's, you know, you, you, you hear a lot of horror stories. So when we started the company, we said, you know, that's not what we want to do. We want to bring over some of these things that we've learned from our, from, from our previous experience and bring it here we we come up with our mission statements and you know with our core values so our mission statement is um you know um enhancing people's lives one person and one neighborhood at a time right and that's broad and that can be a, a guest that could be uh you know team members yeah. you know that's yeah, our investors you know that's yeah, really anybody everybody. that the restaurant right, touches right. yeah so we just want to make a positive impact in all those people's lives you know however we can and then from there we, we kind of drew down you know four four core values and the first one is um, exceptional hospitality you know making sure that our guests have a really memorable experience with great service a great right. ambiance great food the second one is people focused uh, we want to make a really big effort in taking care of our people Treating, treating each other with respect, which again, it's mm -hmm. not a big thing that happens in our industry, but you know, oh. F-bombs being thrown in kitchens is, is very common in our industry. And for us, that's a no. Somebody will get terminated for cursing at somebody else. The third piece is um, community. So, you know, being, being an active member of our community, and I'm really happy to, an, uh, not announce, because it was announced a few weeks ago, So, but we did a partnership with actually FIU, with the um, School of Hospitality. So we started our own foundation called the Grow Bay Foundation, and we're going to be providing 300000 over the next five years to provide scholarships to underprivileged kids that can't afford to study, you know, hospitality. Yeah. 
So that's, you know, so that's, that's, that's really meaningful f- for us, um, you know, to try to pay it forward and help. And then the fourth core value is um, performance. And, uh, you know, th- th- that's, that's not just, you know, P&L performance, but that's, you know, everybody's individual performance uh, mm. as a whole. But we feel, you know, what we always say that if we take care of our guests, that if we take care of our people and that if we're an active member of our community, then the performance of profits kind of take care of, right. uh, you know, of yeah. itself. So that's kind of last, uh, you know, out of our core values. So yeah. being on top of that is really critical. And like you said, the guest experience is, is, is number one in that sense. So you, you open up glass and vine, you see that, that going very well. And by the way, if you haven't been there, it's, it's a, it's a beautiful location, very cool place. I, we love going there with the kids because they have the you know the the playground in the back right mm-hmm. there the location's fantastic was there something about the grove that that you guys just loved or you know from from your past you said oh let's call it grove bay and we'll open up a lot of the restaurants there or so, what so i'll tell you a funny story um glass and vine where it is today that was like sort of an old abandoned building yeah i, don't, I, I remember that. i remember i mean yeah that was abandoned for a long time right so that place holds a memorable experience for me because that's the first time i had a drink at 16 years old oh, in no that way yeah. oh yeah. my gosh so so circle back you know, many, many years later, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of karma, you know, How but it's, funny. it's, uh, it was great. No, but Grove Bay, our name, you know, our company's game, uh, name is Grove Bay Hospitality Group. And it all started because we had bid on the Scotty's Charterhouse project back in 2013. Wow. So, um, after, after, after our, our first two restaurants, that was kind of like the first project, you know, th- that we went into. Right. And it was a very complicated project because it was an RFP. And so we had to bid, we had to go against other folks. And then once we won that, I had to go to public referendum. So meaning that the that the city that the citizens had to vote for yes in in the election of 2013, it ended up passing. I think it was 63 20, uh, 63 37. You know, it ended up passing. Um, but that project took nine years to you know we wow. just opened Bayshore Club right you know, you know two weeks ago. So it took yeah. nine years to to you know come to fruition. Unbelievable. Um. So, but it was because of that project. Because our offices are in Coconut Grove, that kind of, you know, the name Grove Hospitality right. Group, you know, came along. Now, because that took so long to, you know, sort of develop, Glass and Vine ended up being our third restaurant. Uh, okay. You know, you know, also in the Grove. So we kind right. of started in the Grove. That, that was kind of our home turf as far as, you know, the first two projects and our and our office as well. Yeah. So then tell me about now Stubborn Seed and, and, and Red Rooster and how those concepts kind of came about. Yeah. Stubborn Seed, a uh, funny story. So Jeremy... Ford, who is our chef partner there, he was, um, this is going back a few years now, uh, you know, f- five or six years. He was on Top Chef season 13. Yeah. And, you know, I really watch those shows, but that first episode of that season, I just happened to watch for, you know, whatever reason. And he ended up winning, you know, that episode. And he's a Miami guy. And, and he's a Miami guy. That's cool. At that point, he was at the um, Edition Hotel. So he was, a, he, he worked under Jean Georges. So he really wasn't a, a, a known commodity yet. Right. But he had that if factor, man. He he just had it, and, and it's funny. I'm like, God, you know, this guy's from Miami, and I get to the office the next day. My partner's there. We're like, he's like, did you watch it? I'm like, I did. He's like, why don't we call him? I'm sure, let's call him. So we called him up. He's like, yeah, I know who you guys are. You know, I'll go meet with you. Um, and we met, and he never told us. And we're like, you know, so how did you do? And he's like, I did well. I'm like, you know, what does that mean? <laughs> and and he he never told us that he he, he had actually won Top Chef season, you know, that wow. that season. So we ended up signing him, you know, before the season was over, because that's obviously, you know, pre-recorded. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we opened Stubborn Seed. Um, and and, um, and from day one, you know, we got a, we received a four stars from the Herald, which, you know, wow. they hadn't given one in a, in, a, in a very, very long time. And to Jeremy's credit, his goal was always very high. His goal was James Beard or Michelin. Mind you, Michelin wasn't even wow. here back then, you know, you know, when we opened um Summer seed, uh, Michelin only started rating Miami restaurants this year. You know, this is the first year. Really? Wow. And um, so, so, so the bar was set pretty high uh, by us, and you know, and by him. You know, to his credit, he he had a very, very high standard for for what kind of product he wanted to offer our guests. And what's what's the theme for that restaurant? So it's a so it's a chef driven menu. It's basically a tasting menu. Um, the, uh, the menu changes very, very often to you know whatever Jeremy wants to cook, basically. Wow whatever seasonal also. And it's just, he's just very, very, um, you know, he, uh, he's really one of the best chefs that there is, you know, in my opinion. And, you know, I've worked with a lot of chefs, a lot of very talented chefs, but you know, he's at a different level. How'd you guys come up with the name stubborn seed? That's a pretty unique name. <laughs> I think our chief operating <laughs> officer, Eddie, you know, came up with it and it had to do something with, uh, that Jeremy's very stubborn. 
Oh, really? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because, but he he suffered for like you know excellence. You know, yeah. Uh, he suffered for all the right reasons, and um, so it, it kind of just uh, that's you know, funny. Yeah, yeah. Came up for that, and then Red Rooster. Um, Red Rooster is a brand that's um out of Harlem, you know. So that's the one mm-hmm. brand you know that we don't own. Th- th- that's owned by by um Chef Marcus Samuelson, who's one of the biggest chefs in the world. And um, what happened with that? It's you know that's a very interesting story. So he was really credited with Red Rooster in Harlem of really bringing Harlem back and really wow and really um you know once this restaurant opened there many many years ago. Harlem started, you know, flourishing. The Clintons moved their offices there. A lot of businesses started going, you know, going up. And so what happens is that a lot of the inner cities, or I'm sorry, a lot of the cities in our country wanted mm-hmm. Marcus to do the same thing for their for their uh. um, inner cities and bring a rooster there that spoke to that demographic and to help those neighborhoods right. kind of, you know. And uh, so he ended up picking Miami for a lot of different reasons. You know, there's a lot of history with Overtown um, and Harlem. Sure. Overtown used to be called the Little Harlem of the South. And, you know, it has a lot of, you know, beautiful history uh. that um, most people in Miami don't know, unfortunately. But um, so he didn't want to operate from New York uh, here in Miami. So he just called us out of the blue. And we're like, okay. You wow. Know, he, uh, he just called the office and the um, receptionist is like, hey, you have a Marcus Samuelson on the phone. We're like, Really? Okay. <laughs> and he's like, "Hey, I have a project. They're going to meet up." And we said, "Yes." You know, the rest is history. So we got a Michelin bid for that one. So we're very, very, very um, uh, pleased and very honored that we're only one of two Florida-based groups that has you know multiple Michelins. Wow. Um, so that's fantastic. So that's a badge of honor, for man. Sure. <laughs> absolutely, something to be proud of. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so what's next? For you guys and you know where where do you see yourselves in in five ten years are you going to continue opening restaurants you know in in south florida expanding what what's the what's the plan we're blessed right now that we don't need to expand just for the sake of expansion so a lot of things have to line up for us to really do a project um so we just take them you know one at a time and 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 if it makes sense you know th- then we'll do it i think at some point since we're mostly you know we're in miami um i think at some point we'll we'll develop a concept that maybe we can we can take abroad you know do mm. do do sort of like an uh like a big city rollout like a new york or london or something like that so it's something that i that i sort of want to do that's still in my in my in my in my right. you know wish list i guess um but yeah that's that's what we are so so a question that i ask all my guests is was there a game changing moment or or time or event that happened in your life where something really clicked there just was was a game changer for you in your life so we had hired a a um um consultant you know to help us put put a lot together and all the documents and you know how to how to roll it out etc and something he said stuck with me to this day you know, so it was a group in a conference room, maybe about, you know, six of us. And he asked, what's the number one reason why people fail and fail at business, fail, fail in relationships, fail. And everybody's like, oh, you know, not enough experience, you know, not enough education, like all these different things. And he said, self-awareness. And that really stuck with me, like wow. self-awareness. You know, think about that. <clears throat> if you're self-aware of what your limitations are, and I, I know what mine are, <laughs> I, I, I know what I don't know, which is a lot. But if you're aware of those things, and if you don't think you know everything, and, and if and if mm-hmm. and if you don't think you do everything by yourself, then you're able to surround yourself with the right people, and you're able to know what you need and what you don't need. And and if you take that just as a general concept, it can really apply to anything. Absolutely. You know. So so early on, having that having that mentality, it's like, okay, I know I'm good at this, but I really don't know how to do A, B, and C. Who who can I hire to help me with these things? Right. Had I not gone with that mentality, who knows what you, who knows what would have happened, sure, right? Sure. Yeah. So. Oh, fantastic, man! So, Grow Bay Hospitality. Where can they find out more info about you guys on on uh, on your website or Instagram? Grow, uh, Grow Bay com. Yeah, that's our website and uh, Instagram as well. And and their you know and our website. Uh, all of our you know restaurants are there. And, uh, yeah, pretty awesome. exciting stuff. So make sure to go out there. Stubborn Seed, Red Rooster, Glass and Vine, and now the Bayshore Club. Uh, thank you guys for listening. I appreciate you being here. Make sure to hit subscribe and give a like and share this with somebody who needs to hear it. You could be a game changer in their life. So make sure to catch up with us each and every week here on Game Changers. Thank you, everybody. If you loved what you heard in today's episode of Game Changers, please subscribe and rate us. The lessons and the stories in these podcasts are immensely valuable. So I invite you to share them with a friend who needs to hear it. 
you may end up being the game changer in their lives.